Hi, I'm Sasha Segan from PCMag.com here with our mobile analyst AJ Kumar to talk about today's new Google announcements. Now Google went through a lot of stuff. We have two new Nexus phones, two new Chromecasts, and what looks like a relatively rare nowadays high-end Android tablet, uh, the Pixel C. So let's get to it. Um, of course, AJ, I know you were paying the most attention to the Nexus phones. Was there anything about them that really wowed you? Um, with the Nexus phones, I think this is the first time I've seen a focus on the pixel size um, for the sensor instead of just a, a race to the top when it comes to megapixels. So um, I was impressed by the direct comparisons to the iPhone 6 Plus. I think that's one of the main complaints that as an Android user I've had about um, the, the gap between iPhones and Android phones. Yeah, one of the things that I thought was really interesting as well was how much Google focused on imaging throughout the whole presentation. They started by focusing on camera quality with the Nexus phones, and they're using that special Sony uh, 12 megapixel sensor that uh, was not in, has not been in other Huawei phones, has not been in other LG phones. Um, and then they took that over to talking about the Google Photos app and then talking about photos on Chromecast. So photos seems to be very, very important here. Um, now, are, are, there, are there other ways? You're a Nexus 6 owner, right? Um, I have a Nexus 5, a OnePlus One, and I'm looking to upgrade to the Nexus 6P. Okay, okay. So um, when you were looking at the Nexus 6P versus other high-end phablets in the market, um, what jumped out at you as the Nexus 6P's potential advantages other than that camera? Um, it's actually not like any one feature, it's the package of it. It's been rare to find a phone that has a fingerprint sensor, mm -hmm. USB type C, um, that has um, an all metal body and um, a, a quad HD display. And so it's just the combination of all of these at this price point that I've almost never seen. Like the Moto X uh, Pure Edition has um, similar specs in mm -hmm. some regards, but um, it doesn't have all, all of them in one package. So I think that's what sets Huawei out, and it seems like they priced it much lower than they um, than uh, LG has with uh, the 16 gigabyte is 379. Yeah, it's so nice to see Google coming back to the idea of Nexus phones being a little less expensive. I mean, I think one of the big mistakes that they made with the Motorola Nexus 6 was making that $649. Right. And now with the, with the 5X, now I like smaller phones. So the 5X was really the one I was paying attention to. And the thing is, okay, so it's got a Snapdragon 808. It's got that new uh, super low light camera with the big pixels that they claim to have. Um, it's got the USB-C. Um, and I have to say, in, like, in the 5.1, 5.2 inch range, can you think of anything other than the, the, uh, the Galaxy S6 for it to be really competing with? I mean, the Galaxy S6 and the iPhone? Um, maybe the Sony Xperia Z5 Compact or the Z4 Compact? Yeah, as if we're ever going to see those released in the United States, that's the thing. Yeah, aside from that, I can't really think of any phone that's, um, it's been a race to the top when it comes to size. 5.5 inches and above mm -hmm. has been the new default. So I feel like um, that might be the only um, five inch to 5.2 inch phone that we're gonna get when it comes to having flagship specs. Yeah, and at, at $429 for 32 gigs, that's also a really reasonable price. Though, of course, it breaks my heart a little because I looked and I saw it's 2.85 inches wide, which is still, for me, a little bit wider than the phone I want. I mean, as, as people who follow me know, what I really want is another 2013 Moto X. I don't think we're ever going to see that again. Um, the way Google uh, set up its presentation was um, this is the kind of, like, they want to be the market leader for, as an example to other OEMs as like how to build their devices. And so I think now that we've had this established that this is what we're gonna see from now on. Right, it's very important to understand about Nexus that Google does not actually intend to or care about selling a lot of these phones. That they're trying to signal to OEMs what they want OEMs to be paying attention to and they're trying to provide developers a platform that actually has Marshmallow on it so that they can start developing to Marshmallow. Now, um, did you also pay attention to, to the stuff about the new features in Marshmallow? Did anything there jump out at you? 
um, Doze for battery life is going to be something that I think a lot of Android owners will appreciate because I, I don't know about most people, but my battery life degrades after like six months. Mm -hmm. And so um, having your phone go into sleep mode automatically, depending on your usage and potentially extending battery life like 30% can be huge. So that, um, aside from that, uh, Marshmallow is bringing a tap to go. So um, just more integration across mm -hmm. uh, different apps will mm -hmm. be useful. Um, I thought it was interesting how much uh, emphasis Google put on uh, voice commands and on voice activating various third-party apps. And I kept on feeling like that was maybe sort of a, not a back door, but a way to keep trying to jumpstart Android Wear. Because Android Wear is so voice-oriented and Android Wear has really not been doing that well. Right. Um, the thing about voice control on Android Wear is I feel like the like when I use uh, my smartwatch, I'm on mm -hmm. the subway and I say like I can't say OK Google in the middle of a crowded subway mm -hmm. and activate it. So I'm not sure. I mean, I'm sure that's what Google wants, but I'm not sure how well that will go, even if they do have better integration across apps for voice control. Yeah, I always wonder with us uh, New York based tech reporters, how much our experiences in crowded public transportation and, you know, all of that uh, project across the whole country. But Okay, so wrapping up, the, uh, the Pixel C, that tablet, uh, very interesting. NVIDIA X1 processor, I'm fascinated to see the graphics performance on that. Um, do you think there's a market out there for high-end Android tablets? Um, it felt like almost a direct answer to the iPad Pro. Um, and I guess it would be the same market that they're going for, uh, graphics designers, um, just illustrators, and uh, people who really want great rendering. Mm -hmm. um, I actually thought for a while that it would have a dual Android and Chrome uh, OS going on, but mm -hmm. I guess that's not going to happen for maybe another couple of years. Uh, but I think that's the market that we're going to see. Okay, well, uh, we are going to have hands-ons with, um, with as many of these devices as we can up on PCMag.com very soon. Uh, take a look at PCMag.com for ongoing coverage of all the Google products and Android Marshmallow and everything else in computing and mobile. I'm Sasha Segan. He's AJ Kumar. And uh, thank you for watching our reaction to the Google event.